Hi everyone, this video is going to cover um, quite a little niche topic that potentially could come up in paper two of the A-level um, exam papers. And this one is all about how developments in technology have influenced how products are made and manufactured, so the kind of design process. So this is the only slide that I've got. I'm sorry that the quality is not the best. But this um, kind of looks at a range of different things to do with the design process. So all the way from research, sketching, communicating ideas, prototyping, uh, manufacturing and quality control, all the way through to how, how it was done in the 1950s. So back in the day, I don't quite remember the 1950s. I'm not that old, but I know that things have changed a lot, even since when I was um, younger and how they are done now. And even this is probably slightly out of date um, and there'll be even newer things happening all the time that are influencing how products are made. So we're just going to go through each one. I'm afraid this is, the, like I said, this is the only slide I've got. So use your imagination as I talk. But the first thing we're going to talk about is how research would be done. So back in the 1950s, before we had the internet and even computers, you would be looking in books, you might be using um, photography, you might be writing letters to uh, people thinking about like surveys and getting feedback from your customers. And you might be reading things like encyclopedias or catalogues. So even when I was at school and I was asked to do like a like a poster or a school project on a certain topic, I used to use something called Encarta. Talk to your parents about Encarta. I bet you they know Encarta for Windows 95. And it was an encyclopedia that you used um, on the computer, but it wasn't connected to the internet. It was just, you know, it was like an online, not online, a computer version of encyclopedia, uh, encyclopedias. And quite often, even when I was a kid, we had encyclopedias on the bookcase where you'd have like A to D, E to, you know, and you'd have loads of books. If any of you have ever watched Friends, the, the episode where Joey buys the encyclopedias and he can only uh, he can only afford to buy the uh, the letter V copy. So all of the words that he uses are to do with V's. He talks about volcanoes and all sorts of things. Um, but you were very limited to what you could find, depending on the resources that you could access. But now in our day now, we've got the, the world at our fingertips, really, don't we? We have Internet searches. We have digital photography that can be easily shared. So all of this can be shared and accessed online. Um, we have the use of mobile devices, which makes all of this stuff super, super quick and easy to access. Quick and easy to access. And PDFs are basically just, um, you know, documents that have been doc like document files online. So things have changed, as you can see straight a bit, uh, quite a bit. Internet being the massive thing that um, has influenced the ability for us to carry out research. Right, next one, uh, generating and refining our design ideas. Um, back in the day, we would be sketching. Even when I was at school, we used to use drawing boards, which were these horrible boards that were like at a bit of an angle like this. You might not know what I'm on about, but they were kind of like this and they had a ruler at the bottom and they were horrible to use and you, ugh, it was not fun, like almost like an easel. But um, if you made a mistake, you'd have to rub out and redraw it and you had basic copying methods. So you might have photocopying, but you wouldn't have a lot that you could use um, to create your design ideas. And you were very reliant on whoever was doing this. It was very skilled. OK, so yes, CAD and things like that are skilled, but they they do make it a lot easier to produce high quality professional uh, design work. So what do we have now? We have CAD. So we have things like space claim, we have things like uh, Coral Draw and the ability to use things like graphics tablets, where like the one I'm using right now, I'm not using it for a very exciting reason, but it enables you to draw directly onto uh, into a piece of software that can make your drawings look really, really impressive. Parts libraries, you might be thinking, what the heck is a parts library? Well, if you're using something like space claim, there's lots of online um, databases where you can go and download say you were making uh, something for a wheelchair you could go onto online and you could google the certain type of wheelchair and it there would already be a drawing that has been made for you that you can download 
um, we have the ability to scan and we have the ability to render things in 3D. So things like Keyshot, um, all different types of things. So CAD obviously brings its own um, positives and negatives, mostly positives in terms of if you make a mistake, you can easily correct it. They can be easily shared across, um, you know, huge distances. Um, back in the day, if they wanted to send a drawing somewhere, they had to post it, uh, you know, and if you had a load of drawings, if they were um, destroyed or damaged, they were gone. You didn't have a backup. You didn't have a cloud version. So, you know, this has been a massive, um, a massive step forward in terms of using CAD for um, design ideas. Right. Next one is like how you communicate during the design process. So it used to be that you'd have to have face to face meetings, t talk over your landline. I mean, who's got a landline anymore? I know that I've still got one, but the only person who calls me is my mum. And you would have to use the post, which can be quite slow. But now we have uh, web conferences, emails, texts, file sharing, cloud storage. You can do online meeting, Teams meetings, all that sort of stuff. So not going to talk about that in too much detail because we've done that in lockdown. You can see the massive difference that um, the new tools that we have um, make to speeding up a lot of our communication methods. So um, that one's pretty self-explanatory. Modeling and testing ideas. This has come along hugely. So models, prototypes were often made. Uh, they were handmade by someone who was extremely skilled, a really skilled model maker. So quite um, quite often now, people that used to make these really complex models, they don't really have a place in the industry anymore, which is a real shame um, because things like 3D printers and stuff like that have kind of taken over. You'd have to do destructive testing. Um, so destructive testing is, for example, if you were making a, uh, say you were making a chair of some kind, you would have to actually test that to its destruction. You know, how much force can it take? Um, meaning that the product would be destroyed, where actually now you could do that with finite element analysis, um, which is a lot easier. It's going to save you on materials and cost and on time. So, you know, computers have now made it a lot easier for us to, um, you know, create models um, in CAD to do testing on them with finite element analysis and to use computers for quite complex calculations. Um, which would usually take a long time to do. So you can see there's been a big step forward um, in the modeling and the testing of ideas. Manufacturing, another area that's massively changed. It used to be that manual machines um, were used because um, there weren't any much use of things like CNC, so computer numerically controlled machines or any robots or anything like that. Like that. It was all done by people on assembly lines and the stock controls were were paper based. There was no electronic point of sale or anything like that. And everything was manual handling. So there was no little robots carrying stock around. It was all about people doing these jobs. So this is this could have resulted in quite a bit of human error. Um, nowadays, we've got CNC machines. We've got lots of robotic devices, ro robot arms, robotic arms on the assembly lines doing certain types of jobs that can be quite repetitive for people to do and also relatively dangerous for people to do. So you might be thinking, yeah, that has removed a lot of jobs for people, but there are still people that need to monitor and use these these types of machines, CNC machines. Um, so there's still there are still um, areas, you know, while this area is decreasing, this area is increasing. So there's still opportunities um, just in time systems and making them computer monitored. If you've just watched my Internet of Time, uh, Internet of Things video, I, I spoke about how um, compute, um, computers can monitor stock levels in just in time systems. So when you get an order, it will automatically then order the stock and then tell the customer that it's on its way. And 3D printing. Massive, OK, in terms of actually being able to create very complex products and 3D printing is not just polymers anymore. It's starting to become well, it is already 3D printing of things like metals. So manufacturing has changed massively, mostly because it's become more automated. Good word for you to write down if you're making some notes um, and you can see the big difference there. 
Quality control, the last thing that we're going to talk about. Quality control, so done throughout the manufacturing system, um, stages, but also at the end. Used to be, and still is in some areas, that it would be done manually and there'd be visual inspections using things like vernier calipers and gauges and basic laboratory equipment. Nowadays, um, I think this was in the mock exam um, in, I can't remember which year it was, but it was talking about how scanning can now be used. So you can get a 3D scanning uh, handset, which you can use to scan a product. I think the example was a car seat or a, a wheel in a car. And what it can do is it can ch check the dimensional accuracy. It can check um, for any flaws in the product, any flaws in the manufacturer. And all of this can be obviously connected to computers, which can help to control the quality of the product. So quality control has in some way also been um, automated with new technology coming in. OK, I hope that that was useful. Could be a question that comes up. So worthwhile having a think about these things and having some examples that you could talk about. Um, but I hope that was useful and I'll see you on the next video.